Hello and welcome to the NBA show. This is James Cork. I'm a pair and I'm here with an apple. Yep. And, I don't know, a carrot? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I can't elope with you. <laughs> oh, orange, you're right. Uh, we are I, would have, I would make a banana joke, but it lacks appeal. Uh, <laughs> tell, this is the reason why I want to split. I am very jealous about it. Uh, and we're just going to ride this into the ground. Yeah. Uh, Better no. hold a grape. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, this we'll is just not... keep going until we find the core of the issue from which it stems. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. This is enough. No <laughs> uh, we, we have such a good start already. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you're wondering, in today's episode we're going to discuss the newest edition of uh, Super Chef. Uh, <laughs> we're discussing the ingredients for it now. <laughs> we are actually talking about the My Little Pony Friends for version number 9, uh, which is the... 9, 9, 9, 9, sorry. I have to do it. Every time I say 9, I have to make that reference. <laughs> it's the, the Flim Flam Brothers and Granny Smith uh, <laughs> comic, written by Christina R- Rice and... Drawn by Tony Flicks with lovely colors by the awesome Heather Breckle. So, um, well, this, this one comic is the one that I am the most conflicted about. <laughs> Knowing you, like, James, I know why. Honestly, but n- <clears throat> more on that later. First of all, what do you guys, what did you guys think of this, this comic in particular? I mean, out of all the pairs, Pairs, haha, <laughs> get it? I'm making a plan, and it's mad now. All the pairs that you can get. Granny Smith and the Flim Flam Brothers. What do you guys think of it? I mean, you know, alphabetical order inverted as always. So, Silver, what do you th- what do you think of this con? I actually enjoyed it. It was going in. I was very hesitant. I mean, the Flim Flam Brothers have nearly taken Granny's home. Nearly ended up costing her her life, indirectly. But she's been the victim of their scams twice over. She, and I, I think I said this in a review of Leap of Faith, fool them once, shame on you, fool them twice, shame on them, fool them three times, and shame on the writers. <laughs> uh, so, can I can't play that again. But this comic took me by surprise at, well, how well Granny Smith did, how she related her own life history, and how she values family above a grudge. She'll help out guys she's not terribly fond of, and justly so, simply because she doesn't want to see a family split apart. And that somewhat counteracts the fact that Granny Smith is a producist. <laughs> she is incredibly biased and uh, discriminatory based on what you grow. <laughs> you can say it's an anti-orange it, but... Just wait until tomorrow. Then it's the grapes of wrath. <laughs> well, Silver, you have to admit that those oranges, you cannot trust them. As soon as you open one of them, they might squirt juice in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> they might, but huh. uh, I love oranges, so. Oh, boys. Well, as for me, I, I, I'm with Silver in this one. I, I don't know what to think about it at first. Like, knowing... Knowing how the issue stars the Flim Flam Brothers with Granny Smith, that point there already says a lot of. Sorry, that point there already already raises a lot of flags. Like, oh god, this is not gonna be good because is the Flim Flam Brothers gonna con Granny Smith again? But when the cover was shown, the Flim Flam Brothers were fighting, and Granny Smith was in the middle of it. So. Eh, they didn't went for the natural progression thingy that most writers use. And when I take a look see again at the art, it's totally how do I put this? The art here is interesting. It's it has almost it almost has that Andy Price kind of feel where things are how do I put this? They're why they're colorful and there's so many small details in the art that you 
want to pick out and see like if you go to page uh, for the spread you it's a hunting game of ooh look what's here Lou looks what's there it's like, yeah it's ooh. a it's a what is all the levels of detail yeah and yeah, you you can even tell refer- say, see references to other comics like mm-hmm. the Rainbow uh, Dash Micro with the Rainbow Whip Eyes card. Mm-hmm. And and here's what got me thinking: who who was the artist again? Tony Fleece. And we all agreed that the Rainbow Dash Micro was the meh of the whole micro series. And Along also, with the Fluttershy one, yeah, not not really. I don't. I I, I was not in that bandwagon. But we went through. So I went through and looked back at that issue, and I saw the art. And if I did tell you guys that the art there was a bit iffy, strange, but not that terrible. But if you're not used to it, you're not gonna like it, kind of thing. And looking at the comic here, is a complete one eighty. He has improved a lot. Also, may I say that Princess Celeste is going into the banana stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, true, 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 true. But overall, I, know. Yeah, I enjoy this one. I enjoy looking at this. James, what about you? Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I... I'm not a big fan of the film from Brothers. I'm mm-hmm. not. I don't like them. I don't like them. The, not even from not even from a villain standpoint. I hate conmen kind of characters. Mm-hmm. I hate how deceiving they are. And I also, I, <laughs> as much as people praise the Super Speedy's Heather Squeezy six thousand episode, it's definitely not on my among my favorites. I wouldn't even put it on my on on either list. I, I didn't enjoy that episode. Especially because to, because towards the end it gets uncharacteristically mean for a My Little Pony episode. And I didn't like the way that they were portraying these two characters that, for one reason or another, are supposed to be the bad guys, yeah? But in any other situation, they will end up getting chased with pitchforks and torches out of town by an angry mob of ponies throwing rocks at them. And things didn't get any better when they came back in season four with a very similar scheme, not even covering their faces, not even pretending to be someone else. No, they came to Ponyville doing the same thing again, and the Ponyvillians Pony Billions were stupid enough to follow in on their scheme. And then this comic comes along, and they make them likable characters and somewhat relatable, and I'm, gay, and I'm like, God damn it! Don't make me like these characters! I'm not supposed to like these characters, I'm supposed to hate this! Guys, don't make me feel for them. don't make me feel emotional for them. No, don't do that, comic. God, you're doing it. Com- you're doing it. Stop it. You're not stopping. You're, you're... <laughs> Damn. So yeah, conflicted much? Yes, I am. But I think I think we should go deep into it so you can you, so I can explain you further why I am so divided on this one. It's like because the very best thing of this comic for me is also the worst is that. They finally decided to flex out the, the Flim Flam brothers and made them somewhat relatable and likable. But, <laughs> but at the same time, they are making these jerks relatable and likable. <laughs> I'm supposed to hate these guys. I'm supposed to wanting to put them in a blender, not wanting to give them a hug and comfort them. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> anyway. But yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, review the comic from, uh, the get go. But, so right away, we have the Apple family. Uh, then uh, the four members of the Apple family walking towards Big Apple Big Apple Convention 45, <laughs> which wow, there has been another 44 conventions for selling selling other stuff in there. And yeah, it's like Apple Con 45, but they sell other things besides apples. Well, that's James, good, it, right? It, well, Not James, for Granny Smith. <laughs> it's one of those things where. Comic Con early in the days was to promote comics, but now Comic Con is just not, it's just a shell of its former self. Oh no, I am totally forward to selling, uh, other things that other than apples in Apple Con 45, <laughs> but Granny Smith isn't. Because like Silver said, she is a prodigist. <laughs> uh, that's right, but she's also a hipster. I was doing <laughs> Apple Con before was cool. It's so mainstream now, so corporate. <laughs> God. 
Shaw. <laughs> Wait, I gotta say the great say Shaw. <laughs> oh no. So, but the, I want to hold on to this page for a while because the the, the, page, the big spread on page four. Yeah, yeah. I just love this. Like, like you can get lost in this page. Yeah, you know. Okay, if you see the line there. It's, it's just it's just some random line of ponies. Yeah, you can see you can see the uh, the pie family. Mm -hmm. You can see Maud, the other two sisters, the, the parents. You can see Sakura. Cheese sandwich is in there with Trixie yeah. as well. Yeah. And, there is a flash sentry <laughs> as well. Yeah, and, and, actually, uh, sorry to trip up, but um, flash sentries get, should get a lot more hate for this comic. Look closely at him. Yeah. Notice anything extra? <gasps> Ooh! You're right. He's an alicorn. He's an alicorn. <laughs> alicorn flash sentry donut steal of OC shippingness. <laughs> Maybe he put a fake horn so he could fit in with his waifu. <laughs> it's like, Twilight, yeah. look at me. And I don't know if I'd call the pony placement random. It seems like they're grouped together both by the show and fandom uh, interaction. Yeah, the, I mean, but... you got Vinyl and Octavia right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the you things... have you have the entire the entire Sparkle family right mm -hmm. there with Twilight, Spike, Cadence, and Shane in armor. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you have the the CMCs right there following cheerily. Actually, mm -hmm. Sweet Evil, Scootaloo, and Babs are also being followed by Diamond, Tiara, Silver Spoon, and Twist. Uh, I am I am just amazed that I know many of these characters' names. Oh my god. Yeah. And then, that's the thing, like, I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm trying to find one of those situations. Okay, there's gotta be a mess up. You did this twice. Where is the, where is them? There is not a single character repeated in here. Yeah, that's the you thing. Can, that's you the can, thing. You, yeah, you can see the, the, the beast pony over there next to the, ne next to the apple stands over there in the background. Yeah, yeah. The, there is even a shout out to, to Django Unchained of all things, <laughs> when you see the cart that Christoph Gold, the Christoph Baltz, uh, uh, drives over there, the, like the, the dentist cart, it's the, it's a reference to Django Unchained. I'm taking it like that. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they also have a changeling standing out in the middle there, and well, not he's more towards the exit. But I'm like, wow, they're not even trying anymore. Where? Are they? It's like I, I'm a changeling. I'm here. Okay, you've got the uh, everything Apple with Rainbow Dash. Yeah. And next to this, the platform with the pony from uh, the French <gasps> number oh, one. Oh, no. Forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there. He's like, what? <laughs> he's a changeling. That's right. Oh, my God. He's not even trying. He's not even trying. Yeah. He's just right also, there. And they, they um, just let it happen. Also, I, I can't, because of the coloring, uh, this is my mistake, but for a moment I confused Derpy for Rainbow Dash. Yeah, same here. And Rainbow because Dash. Because the, 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 or... the, yeah, Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Dash is there in the, in the Apple thing. Yeah, and Rainbow but... Dash for Blossom Fort, if you take a look, see. No, Blossom Fort is next to Princess Luna, next to the grape drink. Really? Wait, well, who, who's yeah, the pony that's... up there, like the no, oh, one when... flying? The, oh no, you're right, you're right. Blossom Forth is right over the orange thing. Yeah, it's, it, when you don't zoom in, it looks like Rainbow Dash, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah, because of the lighting that they're trying to use. Oh god, you know what we've done, right? What? We've created, we've created a brony detector. <laughs> all, all you have to do is hold this up to a person. <laughs> And they will say, oh, wow, that's Blossom Forth and Aloe and Vera and there's Lyra and the da, 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 da. And then their cover is blown. If this ever gets circulated in high schools, there'll be so much trouble. No, no, forget about high schools. Imagine if you get captured by, by the Germans and they start interrogating you. And they're like, we know that you're the spy. You're the brony guy. No, no, it's not true. I'm not a brony. Then they hold this page in front of you. I dare you not to break under pressure and start saying the names of the characters uh, one after the other. Do you guys see Francois? They... <laughs> Francois? Yep. Francois? You mean the guy at the... Who? The... I don't know who Francois is. Uh, he's the waiter pony, the, the one that's dancing on the table. I oh. I have I have yeah the guy who does the who runs the restaurant mm -hmm. isn't he right there before be, uh, next to the tutti frutti stand? Yep. In the line. Yep, yep, he's there. Yeah, yep. Norman. Yes. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Just oh. remember when the when the German guy interrogates you, you just look him right in the eye and say, "Rarity is best pony," and there's a. Uh, 
chance that he'll say, that's not how you say Fluttershy. <laughs> uh, well, that's a surprise next to Celestia. <laughs> so, yeah, we could probably go on about this for like hours. Ah, uh, yes. Let's move on, please. Wow, I think this is actually causing uh, Norman physical pain. <laughs> No, it's just it's just hunting for ponies. It's like, oh, I see Pinkie Pie, I see the guard, I see the host pony from the, uh, Friends Forever Number One, and then like, oh god, this is, this page is so much fun. I see Paris, I see Friends. <laughs> Me- measure I... measure your brawniness. Name as many characters in this page as possible. Name more than ten. You are a brawny all all the way around. You're completely lost. Good day, sir. <laughs> There is no point denying it, except your brony toot. I already have. Mm. All right, so next but, page. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So the apple, the apples are preparing the, their stand, ready to sell things and all that. And I, I already have a, a connection with this because going to cons last year, I went to two back, back and uh, at Manchester and <coughs> Brony Scott in Edinburgh, and this is exactly how it feels like. Preparing mm-hmm. everything, setting everything in, in to, to put, putting everything in place, making sure that it looks pretty and presentable, and then just hoping that people start buying your things. True, true. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so and and as so, Applejack and Big Mac will take care of it as Apple Bloom and Granny Smith decide to go around and yes, walking around the convention, I guess. And Apple Bloom wants to get one of those exclusive Apple Com 45 Apple peelers, while Granny Smith is going to go around berating and shouting and judging everyone. I never knew that you could cosplay fruits. <laughs> well, you clearly haven't been to Spain, my friend. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, by the way, I see Pony Archie. <laughs> Uh, he's either looking a little sad these days, or he just knows those thunder trolls right off screen. <laughs> 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 or are they gremlins? I forget what they were. I don't even remember. Maybe he's just tired. <laughs> he's oh, just tired. Like, oh, these kids. And or maybe he doesn't want to make eye contact with Granny Smith. I hope she doesn't remember me. <laughs> I like. I like how every. I like how every pony in the first panel of page uh, six. They have their own ID badge hanging from their necks. Do you notice that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's so cool. Yeah, they have their ID badges. That's so cool. Oh, oh, I see I see Jade Singer on panel three. On the right of panel three, I see Jade Singer. Jade you know, Singer? Yes, yes, from yes. The, 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 the unicorn from, from the Twilight, Twilight Sparkle Micro. Yeah. Although I also see Wheatgrass, and she doesn't have a badge. She's crashing, the damn hipster. <laughs> Actually, well, no, neither does Jade Singer. What? Jade Singer. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> she she's ha- she has a long horn. You remember her now, huh? Yeah, I mean, she has a really long <laughs> horn. I, I, was, I'm, I was looking at her and wondering, wow, why why does she have a long horn? Yeah, this, oh, wow. I just real, realized now how this comic is chock full of uh, very neat background references. You can get lost on each one of these panels. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you'll know so, that plot-wise, it's not. Um, there's not a lot to talk about. Part of the reason we're getting we're fixating on all the background appearances is that there isn't a lot of uh, story to it. I won't say that the, the story is quite, quite. The story the story is simple. It's a bit too simple. Two brothers fight. They hate each other. They don't want to talk to each other, and it takes <laughs> a very experienced old mare to tell them what's wrong and get them back together. Well, you just spoiled the entire purpose of the comic. <laughs> we are reviewing this. Spoilers are to be expected. <laughs> I didn't well, even I, make a spoiler announcement at the beginning. <laughs> oh, well, I think at this point when we're, we're talking about every single pony in the... <laughs> Yeah. In the in the, the pages, I think we're well into spoiler territory yeah. already. But I mean, once Flim and Flam make their debut, the background kind of vanishes, and it's just a very steady progression of events. Mm, true, true, true. But let, let's try and move along to the scene that we are talking about, because <laughs> knowing what happened in the end doesn't mean. You know the whole story, so. Well, no, no, you don't. You don't need to know that. But yeah, okay. So, Granny Smith f- suddenly hears uh, 
a, a familiar voice. And of course, because this is a comic, we have to. She has to tell us that oh, that voice is, is familiar, and she ends up crashing into one of the Flim Flam brothers. That is Flim, right? Flim is the one that doesn't have a mustache. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Who I have never seen a pony so sad. Yeah. He looks like he just gave up on life. I mean, the way that he looks is like, oh my god, you look so depressed. What is wrong with you? <laughs> so, this is where it clashes for me. I went into this wanting to hate these guys, and suddenly, heartstring <clears throat> get pulled out. Uh, oh, damn it. Why are you doing this to me? <clears throat> yeah. And he's... He is like, oh, hey, Granny Smith, you, what are you after? What are you doing now? What are you, what are your plans? What are your scheme? What are you trying to scam people with? Uh, uh, no, nothing. I'm just, I haven't seen my brother in a while. Just don't, don't, don't say anything. Oh, God. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything bad now. I don't believe you. I don't trust you. And for good reason. <laughs> True, 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 I mean, true. I, I like the fact that Granny Smith doesn't trust this guy at face value, despite how sad he feels. Because for all you know, after their history, they could be making it up. Also true. I, uh, I agree. Well, why not, right? Because you have the two notorious con artists. Even in the Luna Micro, they were still strong con men. <coughs> They con yeah. people out of everything. And even Luna had to interject in the whole thing and kind of sort it out themselves. Like you guys said, they may have a jail cell, a special jail cell allocated for them only. Which they then con their way out of. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> what, are they trying to sell the cell something like, I don't know, novelty jails or something like that? Yeah. yeah. They, they even <laughs> no, have a that, song and dance about it. So, yeah. <laughs> it is, it, it is, it, it, it kind of goes to show is that depends on the writers, depends on the person working on it. Um, I am now wondering how it would have worked with someone else writing the comic. Mm. I am so happy that the first time that we see these characters in this comic, they are not being jerks. That there is actually there is there is definitely something going on with them, but you don't know yet. So mm -hmm. that's why you have to you have to keep reading. And if you keep reading, uh, after a bunch more cameos, including, is that the Ozzy Osbourne pony on the second panel of page eight? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't. I, it's not Ozzy Osbourne, but it's Slash. Slash. Although slash, before we before we go into another round of guess that pony, <laughs> all right. Uh, one thing that's a little awkward about the art is the cutie marks. They look digitally imposed. Well, I I, I know I know that this was probably colored on a uh, colored by a computer, but somehow the cutie marks just sort of look pasted on digital. Yeah, digital rather than part of the artwork. I sometimes, agree. sometimes that, yeah, I, I, I agree too, and I think we are getting used to see, um, Andy Price other artists. Mm. No, no, not, not only Andy Price. Andy Price does draw the cutie marks on his own without having to add them digitally, which is, I think, it's, it goes to keeping the the <laughs> his art consistent. This is something that Agnes Karpowska does as well with uh, the way that she draws as well. So, uh, that depends on the artist. I don't have anything against putting the, the cutie mark digitally, yeah. but it is it is very jarring because you are basically using a vector from the show, and a vector from the show works really well when it is on the show because everything else is vector. Mm -hmm. But this is clearly drawn by a person, hand, yeah. uh, one by one. Each one of these lines has been put together by an artist. Mm -hmm. So okay. to see the cutie mark just there looking like a vector from the show, it is very... Uh, but Shocking. Yeah, but here, so here, yeah, no, I I I I absolutely agree with uh, with you, Silver, in that regard. But here's also the reason why that we think is jarring because we we like I mentioned before, the Tony Fleece's art has improved, and I think one of the reasons why is because he uses black outlines for the characters, and if you take a look see at all the cutie marks, they're not black outline. So, yeah, they don't have ba they don't have a black outline. Yeah, so yes. that's why we think it's very jarring. To have that sudden change of art. You, you, I, I, already, I already gave my opinion as um mm. as an artist, but what do you what do you think, uh, uh, Silver? What's what, what, for you? What's so jarring about it? 
Well, like you say, that there that there are no black lines around it. That that's probably what creates the uh, imposed feeling. At the same time, here I am the one who pointed out, but with the sheer volume of characters in it, and given that some of these cutie marks are heavily detailed, also one pony special talent is apparently pizza. <laughs> uh, I would love uh, to have that special talent. Oh my god! Eat I don't it and blame making it. <laughs> I don't blame them, but at the same time. It's noticeable. Mm-hmm. It's a noticeable impact on the visual oh, uh, quality. All right, sorry. Uh, I'm just looking at one page where <laughs> Granny Smith is talking with um, Flem, and one pony's cutie mark is waffle and chicken. Which is just disgusting. How does a herbivore get that? I know. <laughs> and there's another pony who's got a ghost for a cutie mark. I'm assuming... She's part of Spirit Trackers. Is anyone in here? <laughs> uh, but, oh, here we go. See, this comic is working its voodoo on us again. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Now on the History Channel. <laughs> oh, God. You, you, I, okay, I need to get this out. I need to get this out. <laughs> now, on, now on the used to be about History Channel. <laughs> uh, I need to get this out before we move on. Lyra Bonbon. Bonbon is giving Lyra the bedroom eyes. <laughs> but what? Where? Yeah. Oh God! No, she's not. Give- no, wait. Oh, she is. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, continue our story, please. <laughs> but, okay. So, Granny Smith has had it with the Flim Flam brothers, because one one way or another, these two guys are up to something. They have to be up to something. So she goes to she goes to Applejack and Big Macintosh, and st- and tells them that hey, I found the Flim Flam brothers. I'm pretty sure they are up to something. And Applejack, very smart, says. Oh, you mean the same way that they managed to trick you twice? You know what? Better stay away from them. You you, you don't want to get meddled in there. True, true. <clears throat> That's the best course of action, really. Um, not you won't get fooled if you don't hang around them. But Granny Smith being stubborn as she is, she just she sees she sees Flim walking away from the convention as. The same, looking so defeated, and she's like, "Ha ha! I'm pretty sure she's going after something. He's he's going to do something, and he's going to sit under a tree and sulk." I'm sorry, Flame. When did you start to behave like a Final Fantasy character? <laughs> uh... I, w- I want to know what he did to smell so bad. How come? Because there's Gray Smith saying Eureka. <laughs> I I think. <laughs> oh, okay, go. Cool. Oh my god, the puns. <laughs> oh god. And so I'm surprised you haven't mentioned the co- the tree cosplayer. I'm sure Fluttershy's jealous. There's a tree cosplayer? Ma- yeah. When Granny Smith is saying, make way you oh, slow pokes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a, there is a guy cosplaying as a tree. <laughs> and Fluttershy is like, that is my husbando. <laughs> <gasps> That's my gist. <laughs> I was cosplaying a tree before it was cool. <laughs> Oh my gosh! But, uh, but yeah, so R- R- uh, Granny Smith goes up to Flame and starts demanding answers. Like, what are you up to? What are you scheming about? And that's the point where the comic actually goes in the completely different way, because up until now you could understand what Granny Smith was doing, what she was going for, but. No, it is, in fact, the fact that the Flim Flam brothers are no more. They are not talking to each other again. All because of one lady. Yeah. That got in between them, they both fell in love with her, and then they got angry at each other, trying to outdo their favors to this uh, one mare. She left them, and, and, and they don't talk to each other anymore. Yeah. Marion the Librarian. I would have to Which, say this. Marion the Librarian. Wow. Well, I, I would like to say that this librarian, her design, oh la la. Oh well, you know what that calls for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it! It it is it is interesting though because she is kind of she was kind of like you know Silver how when you said that Flash Sentry was made for Twilight. Design wise, how they pick the colors and they, uh, uh, they, you know, made him orange and blue because those were the colors that fitted better when con- in contrast with Twilight Sparkle. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
is that this character looks like she's been designed to fit with the Flim Flam Brothers because her build, her body, her body shape is not very common. Uh, she's taller than the average pony. She is a very soft cream color uh, shade of uh, pink. And uh, if you notice, her mane is a very, a slightly darker color of the Flim Flam Brothers' uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, coat. True, true. So it's like they were going, they, they had a chart going through all the different design choices. It's like, okay, we have to make her as tall as they are, uh, this shade of coat, this shade of uh, hair. They, 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 okay, got it. There we go. Design done. That's why I am not so blown away by her is that she kind of feels fabricated. Well, the thing is, well, it is, the story mm-hmm. was designed around them, but if you take a look, see, she is pretty interesting. Like, the whole design-wise, like, drawing an OC for the situation that they're in is pretty awesome, and she looks pretty good. Well, I guess it's the same reason why some people really like Fleur de Lis. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the, the, you know, you know Fleur de Lis, mm-hmm. with the one who was with Fancy Pants, and why I wasn't so blown away by it. Is that... Is it, yeah, it doesn't say anything to me, personally. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. Although it is, even her name is well chosen. Uh, the Flim Flam Brothers are a semi-parody of The Music Man, a book, play, and movie. Mm-hmm. And they are based on the con man main character. Well, guess who his love interest in the movie is? Mary the Marian? Librarian? Marion the Librarian. <laughs> who I believe those uh, earrings she's wearing are in reference to Mary and the Librarian of The Music Man. Ian. Wow. Oh my. I didn't know that. They look like dream catchers now that I look at them. So they they really put a lot of effort into her design for a mere two page appearance. I like how I find failed. it. Totally. Although I, I find it kind of funny, a lot of people were th- when they first saw this page, they thought, oh, she'll probably turn out to be a bigger con artist than either of them, oh. like Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Oh, I, I thought that too. I thought that too. <laughs> But that's not what happened. Yeah, she oh. she was a legitimate librarian who was totally fine going on a boat ride with two stallions trying to woo her. Which, if that doesn't say you hussy, well, you have to remember that brothers appeal, like watch Supernatural. Some people have a thing for those kind of things. It's kind of funny, but it, it is it is it is kind of interesting to see that these guys these guys share everything. Except ladies. Hey, I, I they don't... never they never heard of a threesome. God damn it! <laughs> no, nope, nope. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> no, so, but yes, yeah, it is. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Forward. So. <laughs> I just you could you could say oh some people are into that, but quite frankly, it does carry that she's using them. <laughs> and there's yeah. well, I I haven't seen the full music man. I can't speak to the actual Marion character. But this pony does give away a little bit of destructive flirt. Hmm. It is it is true that that she does give a bit of destructive flirt. But from from what we are told, from what we see here, is that that came from both Flim and Flum fi- fighting over each other. Is that no? I want I want her. No, no, I want her. No, I want her. So in the end, she didn't choose either of them, and then they ended up getting angry at each other. So it's not that she was trying to to break them apart, or was she? Dun, dun, I don't dun. think she. <laughs> Who knows? That's that's fanfic territory right there. That is fanfic territory right there, exactly. But I like how because if, if you if you take this show at face value, you know that this show doesn't have you know deceiving um, uh, characteristics motive. or like yeah, it's like the characters in this show they don't have ulterior motives. Uh, Separate. For, the, Except for, the, for, the most, <laughs> for the most, for the most part, they don't have like second. They don't have a, a hidden agenda, or they're not trying to get away with something else, unless you know they are the Flim Flam Brothers. And to have these two guys actually in this comic being so open that Granny Smith has been attacking both both brothers, and here it is Flim telling her about all of this. He he doesn't have. He doesn't have an obligation to explain to her, her of all characters who has been so rude with them for for the past few pages. 
He has no reason to be nice to her. And yet he is. That's, that's, uh, I hate to say that, but it's admirable of him to do that. I like that. That was a good moment for, for, for Flynn. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I hate these guys and this comic is making me care for them. Yeah. Ah! I mean, just reading the passage on page, uh, what am I call this? Page 14 where Flynn, was it Flynn? Flynn's explaining the whole situation and stuff. And Granny Smith says, she sounds stiffy. <laughs> then with Flim saying, no, nah, she was wonderful. That that was just, how do I put this? That means that he cared for her for at some point. Like, even though she broke his heart and also his brother's heart, but he still cared for her at some in some way, shape or form. There is, this is one thing that the comic is doing that the TV show never did. It's giving these characters a bit of humanity. Until, until now, the Flynn Flam brothers have been the, uh, cackling douchebags mm -hmm. who appear in Ponyville and they are going to take your house, your farm, your apples, and you're going to do nothing. You won't be able to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. and that's what they have been doing. That, the, the one moment in the, not relating to the TV show, is that the one moment where they take away the Apple family's uh, farm, and they start laughing in their faces. Those, that's one of the moments that I, I, I cannot watch because to me it's kind of like needlessly vindictive and way too over the top mean. That is one of the moments of the show that I really frown upon. I'm like, that's a, that's a big, that's a, that's a, that's too much of a contrast mm -hmm. where we start the episode with a very funny son, song and dance number. And then we're having a family being evicted, and you're laughing in their faces. That's and not cool. yeah, that's something that that's one of the reasons why I really don't like the Super Speedy Six Thousand episode. And here comes this comic. Who the hell does this comic think it is? Giving <laughs> humanity and character to these guys and making them likable and relatable. God damn it, comic! God damn it, Christina uh... Rice! God damn it! <laughs> why one. you have to be such a good writer? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So Granny cannot stand to see family uh, being torn apart. So she decides to organize a meeting between uh, the Flynn from Brothers without them knowing about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and that's where uh, they both face each other. And I have to say, one of the most over-the-top expressions I have ever seen drawn in this in this comic. True. So, true. Pure hatred. Oh yeah, I mean, if you if you're looking at a if if you want to look at a fight scene about to start, this is a good one. Like even though we don't see the fight happening, but we can we can just look at how it's going to go down. You have two unicorns about to get ready for battle, and you can see them uh, stomping their hooves on the ground. And what what do you call them? Uh, blowing their noses or something like that? I don't know, but flaring their nostrils. Yeah, yes, flaring their nostrils. Flaring Thank nostrils. you. Yeah, you, you, that, that, there, with also speed lines, that's just awesome to look at. Really awesome to look at. And then we hit the flashback. Yep, because Granny Smith did the same thing too. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, she. It, it is. It is good to know that she actually knows the grief that that can cause from her own perspective. Mm -hmm. Also, we see young Granny Smith. <laughs> oh my god, no, wrong, come on. Ah. No, the <laughs> question what? is... What? Well, they come, out of the, they come out of the woodwork for uh, Mary and the Librarian, why not? Because, because Granny Smith is way, way, way beyond your age range now, man. Come on. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You're, I've never heard of a pony cougar, but you never know. Oh, God. Oh, really? What about Miss Harshwini? What about her? <laughs> she's the biggest she's, she's the biggest cougar the world has ever given to us. Oh, my God. She's the cougarest of cougars. Oh, God. I don't know where this is coming from, but it sounds terrifying. Wow. <laughs> 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 All I know is that uh, all I know is that in uh, in this comic that's trying to make ponies look attractive, 
Grandpa Smith was a lucky stallion. Mm. Oh, it was. And then he tried to tell, she tried to tell Applejack and Big Mac about it, and she was like, no! <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, boy. But, anywho. <laughs> when your grandpa and I love, love each other very much, ah. now... <laughs> Out, 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 backing up, backing up, backing up. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> uh, putting two apples in their ears, like, no, not listening, poink. Oh, boy. <sighs> anyway, but, yeah, after that explanation, the Flim Flam Brothers realized the, the error of their ways. That, yeah. in the end, it isn't worth it to fight and getting angry and just stop talking to each other over anyone. Mm-hmm. Anyone. B- b- girlfriend, boyfriend... Friend, whatever, it's not worth it to get over, to get angry over someone who don't who doesn't care for you. So, so they decide to get reunited. Granny Smith doesn't want to be hugged in the group hug. <laughs> she really wants to get out, uh, get out of there. And the convention ends with I have to say the Apple family doing quite a slam dunk when it comes to the to the sales. Yeah, they I mean, have look far at that. The, fewer. Far fewer apples than when they started. True, true. Oh yeah, like I, I, and this is also one thing that happens. Like when you go to a con, you're never going to sold out on everything when you when you leave. Like mm-hmm. hell, when I went to when I went to 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 back, I still had of uh, some of the uh, patchwork hearts that I was selling over there. Um. So, but these guys, they almost sold out completely. Mm, that's good. So I, I am very happy to see that they are realistic enough that they don't have a, oh, wow, this is awesome. We sold out completely. No, they still have some apples left, which is good. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is believable. They are not going to sell out everything. Oh. you got to eat them on the way home. Yep. I still can't <laughs> believe they still have one pie. Come on. Apple pie sells out pretty fast. I'm pretty sure they kept that one pie just for them. Uh, probably, probably. Actually, that's just their pie chart. <laughs> Uh, uh, but so we end on the well, not really. Uh, we we move on to see that the Flim Flam Brothers are doing their magic. Yeah, magic. they are doing their own thing. Yep. And someone ripped off Flash Century's horn. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's no. He's it's no longer an alicorn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. I mean, really. <laughs> He's got enough going against him right now. He doesn't need Alicorn OC labels. Gary Stu. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nobody likes you, Flash Sentry. Go home. Okay. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. But anyway, so the, the the comic ends. The Flim Flam Brothers are reunited again. The Apple family goes away with very good sales. And Granny Smith learns a valuable lesson. I... Think maybe I'm pretty sure she still hates uh, oranges anyway. That's me for another issue. Yeah, yeah. she's still yeah, a protocist. She's still a protocist. Yes. Hmm. So uh, that was the French Forever issue number nine, featuring Granny Smith and the Flim Flam Brothers. And well, okay, you, you know what? You remember how whenever there is a there is a French Forever comic, and mm-hmm. it's all about the interaction between the characters and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that I, now that I recheck this one, there is interaction between the characters, but at the same time, there isn't. Is there a minimum? Because the conflict, the, the conflict is not between, between the Flim Flam brothers and Granny Smith. The conflict is between Flim and Flam, and Granny Smith is the moderator. Yeah. I mean, you could have put yet, anyone else in there. You can't, and yet, this this situation can only be resolved by learning more about Granny Smith. So there's equal parts development, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, and by by involving herself, Granny becomes more of a friend. Though they'll probably con her blind uh, if they get the chance. Yeah, but you know, uh, to me, when I look at the whole thing, where you say that they will con her, I I, I don't think that. Well, here's hoping that they won't con her blind. They'll just try to get some something out of dealing with the apples, but they won't hurt them because, well, because of Granny Smith. They, they're they back together. They're recon, recon, reconcile, reconcile? Reconcile. Reconcile. Reconcile their issues and problems. 
So, well, we, they have to at least give some leeway there. But I don't know. I mean, to me, the whole comic from the very beginning when I say about micro series and Friends Forever is about learning that lesson that is needed in each of the whole pony comics or most of the side stories. And here we learn that you shouldn't hold a grudge because that will, that will ruin your life. you lose a friend out of it. A friend or a brother. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whichever is worse for you. True, 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 true. But uh, sorry for cutting you there, Silver. I, I just had to put in my two cents. No worries. But all in all, I think uh, I think this is one of the stronger entries in Friends Forever because it flushes out two basically one-dimensional characters originally. They're con men. They know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also a- adds something to Granny Smith that gives her some uh, dynamic. It's always nice when the when the uh, show or the comics re- reminds us this isn't just a batty old lady. She's had a lot of life experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, well, we seem to forget that Granny Smith here, well, she was once young too in uh, Apple Appreciation Day, was it? Uh, family Appreciation family, Day. Yeah, yeah. Family appreciation, in Family Appreciation Day, uh, we learned that Granny Smith was the one who knew about the Zap Apple Gems and knew what to do with it. From there, we learned that, hey, your elders are experienced in life, so they know a few tips and tricks that they can bestow upon you. And in this comic, it's about you two should not fight because back in my days, uh, I did the same thing and those two brothers were fighting and they never talked to each other ever. So I feel guilty and sad about it. And you two should not go the same way as how they did. And with that, they learn a lesson there. Oh, sorry, I, I do, I do kind, I do feel for the Flim Flam brothers very much actually because something very similar happened to me a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. where uh, I had a friend and we were both kind of like fawning over this one particular girl, and she was kind of playing up with us, seeing which one was going to be the the one coming on top. And when we both made our move, we made it kind of at the same time. Things got very rough, and we ended up having an argument. We didn't talk for it to each other after after a couple of months later. Uh, we are still friends now. Very good friends, actually. We we both are fans of MLP. We talk to each other every day. And that other girl, she's, like, gone somewhere else. But uh, we, don't know, we don't know what happened to her. We ended up realizing that she was playing with us. So, But it is... It's funny to to see how these guys they suddenly become relatable. Mm-hmm. What a difference does giving them a bit of flaw that is somewhat human make? Because I have to be honest, the whole idea of the con man nowadays mm-hmm. it's kind of like a romanticized idea, yeah. you know, which is not all that common anymore. Now instead of having the the, the man coming with um with a card saying that they are selling snake oil and that they are going to course to, co- to cure your rheumatism. <laughs> now they say they are the president of Nigeria asking you for a <laughs> money transfer in their email. So, yes. yeah, the whole idea of the con man is completely gone. So I'm very happy to see that they change it. If they went and apl- a- adapted this kind of personality in the TV show, I will be very happy to see it. Yeah, but I will very much enjoy it. Yeah, but unfortunately, we won't see anything carried over to the show. So that's something, how do I put this? That's something unfortunate. Well, but part of the enjoyment of the comics is you get to see things that might not be tackled in the show. And that's fine. It's fine if they're a separate continuity. It's still fun to just imagine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, true, true. And one okay. thing before we move on to other things, I need to say that the product that the... Flim Flam Brothers are selling. It's real. That we well, that we know. No, I. It see. could. It, it could break. 
in like a week. Oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah. A, a week. A week. <laughs> a week. Six ten days. minutes. Six <laughs> minutes of use. One use. <laughs> One use. Oh god, those things break so easily. As you know, they have the the stigma as seen on television. Oh, you know yeah. that it's not going to last a couple of minutes, more than oh, a couple of minutes. I, I have all, I have to say something also. That you you guys remember um, Ten Awesome, right? There's this one reviewer from England. He reviews yeah. a scene on TV products. My, my, Mike J. Yeah, Mike J. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy who does shameful sequels. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hello, I'm a British person. <laughs> yes, him, him. Hello, I'm a British person. Yeah, yeah he was reviewing. He was reviewing Lego sets this uh, this uh, uh, Christmas. Oh wow, well. that was really good. Yeah. And just look, and looking at this reminds me of him reviewing this. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think I remember. It's the potato peeler. No wonder this reminds me of that. It is a pota- It is like a potato peeler, but for apples. Yeah, and he did a race between who 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 can peel faster, the fastest, this machine or the potato peeler. The potato the potato peeler won. <laughs> uh, oh, unbelievable! Those yeah. things, those things that they sell to to uh, <laughs> you know retire. People and old mm. people that they they are the ones that keep those inform infomercialism BS still going. Yeah, oh, but... we're going into South Park territory. Oh yeah, I remember that episode too. <laughs> so so the moral of the story here is that Granny Smith just helped the Flim Flam swindle every pony, hey. and it's okay, and it's okay because they're all filthy, filthy orange eaters. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Hey, one of those filthy orange eaters, Celestia. Look at the hoof there with the golden shoe. But it's it's like a gray hoof. It's like one of her guards, probably. Which means that she he's further indebted to the service for the next couple of centuries. So there you go, job security. Yeah. Wait, or is rather... the royal guard hoof uh, shoe horseshoe like that? Uh, I think so. I don't think so. Let's take a closer look because I know they wear horseshoes, not unlike. The royal, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Huh. All right, so well done, that, that. Who knew? We, well, I knew because I said so. Because okay. I am all knowing. Oh boy, that that can I, be good. I knew you'd say that. Oh no. And that. Uh, anyway, um, I'm guessing already fi- final thoughts are out of the way, right? Well, yeah. We should do final thoughts. Okay. Well, at reinverse alphabetical. Like yeah, re- inverse alphabetical. Yes, sir. Well, I just enjoy this comic overall. It's not. It's like the top five Friends Forever, I think. But I think it's because there's not a lot of intrigue. It's a very straightforward story that relies more on. Well, as as our review has shown, you just get swept up and spot the pony. And spot the changeling and look for the hidden jokes. There are a wealth of visual gags in this. The, the Flim Flam story does make them more relatable, more sympathetic, even though by the end they're back to their conning ways. <laughs> and Granny True. Smith is a is a producist. Mm-hmm. Uh, so but all, all in all, it's a it's a fun story. It's really enjoyable, and it and if you happen to know the trivia behind the appearances, it's enhanced. Yeah, you don't have to know it to enjoy the story. True, true, true. I, as for me, I, when I read it, I enjoyed it a lot. And rereading it, I felt the same way too. And looking at those two brothers fight, and looking at how they, how they, how they split up, and they felt sad. Like uh, th- th- that was not fun for anyone. That was not it was fun. that was that was hard to watch. Yeah, I mean, that was hard to watch. Mm-hmm. And re- I, I I can relate because recent I I'm in that boat. I'm in that boat where it's not easy and and uh, how do I put this? I'm in the same boat and just watching that now. With the current mindset that I have, it's sad. And for them to be all happy and, you know, not being in the current position they're in, 
makes me feel better about myself. So yay. It's hard. It's hard. I like the art and the color. Tony Fleece is doing a good job. Yay him. James, what about you? <sighs> okay. Hate the film from Brothers on a TV show. Hate them a lot. Didn't like them very much on their Christy Girls counterpart. In fact, they were even more annoying. Um, their designs were freaky. Uh, but these guys in this comic book, the way that they are presented and the way they are being drawn, which, by the way, the artwork, Tony Flix is turning into my, my second, if not tied in first with, K uh, with Andy Price as favorite artist that works on the official comics. The artwork is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beam, brim, brim, filled to the brim with detail and like something that some pages that you can get completely lost into. You feel that the the convention is crowded. You can feel that feel that uh, every one of those characters has a story of their own and a reason to for being there. So that that is super cool. But the the, the heart of the matter, the feeling from brothers, their conflict and all that, they are good. They are very good. Very well written. They don't follow the trope of con artists going on and there. It's like, I like how Granny Smith focuses on helping them out because she doesn't want to see family breaking up despite them uh, uh, hurting her business a couple of times and her family as well. But she's able to put all of that behind to give them a hand. And despite the, 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 the real conflict of the whole thing coming just between half of what the comic is supposed to be the focus that you can take Granny Smith and substitute her for any other character in the in the in the Apple family. You, you could put Apple Bloom in there for all I care about. And it will have the exact same result. Or or hell, Applejack or anyone else. But I I do I do like the resolution. I like that they don't follow several tropes that are very annoying. And I both like and hate the fact that they made the Flim Flam Brothers likable and relatable characters. So yeah, that's 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 what I think. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. To, it hurts to finally open up and say, "Yeah, these guys, you you you're okay on my book." Yeah, well, James, at least in his comic book. Yeah, at least in the comic book, James. At least in the <laughs> comic book. Comic. Let's see what they do in the TV show. Let's see what they do in the TV oh, show. Right. I don't... Forget it, James. It's Comic Town. Yep. <sighs> In, in in before Flim and Flam join Trixie and Discord in their own pony version of the Suicide Squad. <laughs> no. That'd uh, actually be pretty funny. Yep. Mm. That would be entertaining. The main actually. six The main six get captured by a villain and Celestia recruits the biggest scoundrels to bust them out. Actually, <laughs> we I, I it's not that I am working on a comic like that, but my one of one of my biggest collaborators, he is writing a comic that is very much like that. It's the the the, the Suicide Squad version. It's called the Ministry of Special Services. Wow, it's been it's already coming out on Tumblr. I'm gonna have to link it in the show notes at the end. All righty then. All right, but yeah, I guess this is it for today's episode review. You guys have any other uh, things to mention? Other final thoughts on this one? I wonder if Granny Smith gives au pairs trouble. Oh, God. Oh, God damn it. As for me, on a serious note, on a serious note here, uh, issue number nine is not a good start for new readers. Pe people who... Uh, well, how it People who want to get started on reading the comic, issue number nine would confuse you... At, would confuse you totally if you haven't been watching the show. So, yeah, um, reader be warned. Number, issue number nine is not a good, good place to start on reading the comics if you have not watched the show. I agree. But if that's the case, why are you listening to this podcast? Well, are we your are we your first taste of the brony fandom? In which case, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, James, next week, what's, what are you going to review? Oh, next week we're going to be reviewing issue number 10 of the Friends Forever series, which features uh, Fluttershy and Iron Will. 
<laughs> which once once again also written by Christina Rice uh, with art by Agnes Garbowska. Now, this one is going to be interesting. From what I remember, if I remember correctly, this is the first comic to come out after the season four ended. Really, though. No. Yes. It's the first. It's the first appearance of Twilight's castle in the comics. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and it's the return of. The, char- the one character from that one episode that I don't talk about. <laughs> that you don't really like. Oh, God. No, honestly, that is the one episode that I consider completely unwatchable. So it's going to be very interesting to see what we what we think of it. When some pony tries to critique, show them you're unique. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that rhymed. Uh, uh, anyway, so yeah, I think that's it for today's uh, episode review. Thank you, uh, episode comic. Oh god damn it, I keep confusing episode with comic. I cannot stand this. I'm such an idiot. No problem. Anyway, Dave, no problem. We, we'll be reviewing the episode soon. <laughs> yes. We hope you guys had fun. You hope you guys enjoyed or enjoyed yourselves, and uh, we will see you next time. Next, on the next episode review, same episode, episode time, same episode channel. I don't care. I'm going to call it episode. Ah, <laughs> never mind. See you guys next time. Uh, bye-bye, guys. I am a citrusist. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> lemons. Lemons are you. Lemons. 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 <laughs>